Um, I'm going to introduce you guys to a relatively not so common term. Um, and this term is service intelligence, right? I know most of us have become familiar with the term business intelligence. So service intelligence is quite, quite a relatively new term. So our next speaker is an AI Wonder Woman. Okay, so hear me out, guys. Um, she, she currently serves as the managing director of Antright, an AI company that turns silo data into actionable insights in the service intelligence industry. She is also an advocate for diversity and empowering women in tech and has co founded NGO Girls in Tech in both London and Poland. She has been featured and spoken at RASA, Future of AI, and Women in AI. I know it's a lot. Once you, and if you think you're, she's done, she is not. She also has a blog and co hosts a podcast on AI called AI That Matters. Here to speak on how AI can improve our lives and work in service intelligence is none other than Miss Camilla. Thank you so much, Camilla. Thank you for joining us, and we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Claire. Uh, let me just try to share my screen. Do you? Yes, now, now, now we can. Okay, and okay, perfect. Um, so um, I'm really grateful, first of all, uh, to to be part of your initiative, and I I'm really uh, amazed uh, what kind of things you are doing in Pan African Foundation. Thank you so much, Elaine, for for doing this as well. Um, so my uh, task, um, my my little um, um, value, I guess I would love to give to you is to uh, help um, understand a bit how kind of, uh, what kind of uh, AI um, are like is already uh, out there and can support and can improve our lives and work. Um, and since I am also working in uh, artificial intelligence uh, through my work with um, Untried and our work with uh, U like UK Police, um, where we focus on improving the service intelligence, so serving um, customers, service, uh, serv uh, like serving um, citizens, um, this is something I feel um, maybe um, I can uh, like interest you. So it's important to note that uh, service intelligence is not an industry. Uh, it's a function uh, you can apply in work, in all day-to-day -day situations. Uh, I mean service um, like, for example, customer service or co company operations. So thanks to AI, uh, we can make this service intelligent. <laughs> Uh, so the most significant uh, practical app application of AI um, is, uh, for example, automating customer service. So making it uh, hassle-free, basically. So AI can be used to analyze the customer's uh, entire history, uh, the problems they faced, and uh, any particular uh, similar problems they, they, they also some other customers faced. Uh, so you can... Uh, fix the, their problem uh, faster by utilizing what's already there in, in, uh, in your knowledge base. So AI helps us to uh, fix those problems much faster, much more accurate uh, than any human could ever do because obviously our time uh, is limited and we are always prone to error. So as I said in the beginning, I work in uh, an AI-powered uh, or AI-focused company called Untried, uh, where we use AI to create what I call an internal brain uh, for enterprises. So think of it as a Google uh, for internal company knowledge. Uh, so we, in short, we just com connect the right people with the right information, uh, which is especially crucial uh, in life-sensitive, uh, like time-sensitive situations. So we don't replace anything. Human is always uh, at the center of, of everything, on, of all operations, and uh, AI is never mm, uh, overruling uh, decisions of the human. AI is always supporting and uh, always advising human um, and showing uh, information which a person may uh, have missed. 
So uh, we are building like a um, connecting tissue between different systems, different uh, like databases. So a person can easily uh, get uh, the right type of information in one place. Uh, so just to visualize you how like very simple how it looks like. Um, so we have like this uh, uh, like a layer which sits on top of the uh, systems, and we just connect it, apply AI, uh, understand the context of the uh, of the data, and hopefully um, help people to interact with this with the information in like natural. Uh, language. So you don't need to use any keywords. You don't even need to know that uh, such uh, information exists. Uh, it just brings you all the crucial information um, which may help you. And I strongly believe that um, AI will be the defining or is already a defining technology uh, of our times. Um, and in the, today's talk, I, I want to explain you how we as consumers, as builders and decision makers um, can start um, embracing AI uh, in our lives and our workplaces. So I want to show you some uh, couple of examples of um, the projects we've been working on or projects I've heard uh, and find uh, interesting. Uh, and those projects help improve uh, improving both commercial and uh, public focused uh, outcomes through um, improving service intelligence so this uh, this type of uh, app I'm sure everyone is familiar with uh, it's a notepad and you may be surprised or shocked uh, but this is how some of the UK's uh, police um, forces save lives. Uh, so <laughs> when you call a, an emergency number 9991 uh, nine, nine, or 101, the non-emergency one, uh, the officer, on the other hand, uh, writes down all what they hear, what, what you are reporting uh, in a Windows notepad. And this information then has to be transferred to the dispatch officer who analyzes what's in there. So, for example, they check for information against uh, vulnerable people, databases of uh, registered vehicles uh, or crime information. So, for example, if someone is an owner of a gun and this, especially in small forces, is done manually. So can you imagine the stress? Someone is yelling, can be yelling if it's a, if it's a life threatening a situation or crying on the other end. And you're trying to find correct information in the multitude of uh, systems. And some of those systems have been designed in 90s. So you can imagine they are quite complex, quite uh, cumbersome. And, and you have to have spe specialized knowledge to, to know where to find some information. And, and of course, there have been, there have been attempts to uh, streamline the whole process. Some departments uh, replaced uh, the notepad with a dedicated system. But the core problem, which is siloed data, so data fragmented in, in many different systems, um, and all the, its uh, repercussions uh, remained. So previous attempts at consolidating data uh, access um, failed because those solutions attempted to replace existing existing systems with one unified platform. But it's never going to be possible because each platform has been designed or, or placed um, as a strategic investment. Each platform is supposed to do something a bit different. Uh, so you can never really um, I, unify one, uh, uni unify everything in one. So this is both problematic um, on both on, on technical level, but also, um, or more importantly, on the organizational and political uh, level. Because if you think about it, technology should serve us, not the other way around. So my colleagues um, at Antrite uh, and I think that the current way of working with uh, information and drawing um, feedback or insights from company know-how uh, is broken. That's why we are on the mission of giving people control, giving people back um, how they 
I can interact with the data which they produce, they store uh, in a much more efficient way. And AI um, can do that. AI is able to help, like, uh, to help machines basically um, understand human language, human um, way of reasoning. So if we are able to do that, if we are able to um, power our technology with, with the new um, algorithms of within machine learning, natural language processing, so broadly AI, um, employees and, and us uh, can work more uh, independently, uh, test ideas and, and be more and work on something which is already uh, out there, but um, it's very difficult to find it otherwise. Uh, so this is also called uh, the company tribal knowledge uh, or collective knowledge, as we call it. So to get there, uh, we need to tackle one of the biggest problem. Um, and this is what I said before, the siloed data. But AI is our biggest hope to fix it. Uh, so it can help us to do those um, applications and, um, and the workflows much more intelligent. So, so what's exactly our current human uh, machine relationship? So what's the, what's the current state of AI? Well, we are closer to using it uh, already than, you may, than some of you may think. So I want you to notice that you are surrounded by AI-powered uh, inventions, often without even realizing that they use AI. So Alexa, Uber, Amazon recommendation engines, they are all stuffed with AI. They, they, they are programmed to understand your preferences uh, and, and help you and, and learn your the patterns of uh, of your shopping uh, decisions, shopping behavior, or um, for example, <laughs> your house. Uh, so, for example, with the uh, drone, uh, sorry, with with the Roomba robots. Uh, so those robots are everywhere in and in, in many houses. So those from cleaning your house, uh, also used by pets sometimes as a means of transport, uh, to enable the drones. Delivered, uh, delivering blood to the most re uh, remote places. So these are all examples of specialized AI. Uh, and because there is not such, as, as you rightly said, uh, Claire, there is not such, so, such thing as a general um, artificial intelligence. So the superhuman or supercomputer, basically, uh, that learns and understand any intellectual task uh, that a human being can. So all examples I'm sharing here, even the ones, the, the projects or the uh, workflows we work on um, are type of uh, narrow, um, narrow type of uh, AI. So um, this, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, uh, but uh, there is uh, uh, like a law called Amara's law, uh, which basically says that as with any technology uh, trends picking up. So for example, if you have any technology uh, trends uh, picking up, like for example, we had big data, VR, blockchain, uh, right now is obviously crypto and NFT. Uh, people rush to predict uh, huge breakthroughs uh, in the next few years, but usually it never happens. Uh, because it takes time uh, to to get adoption of those new of this new technology, uh, but once it's mainstream uh, and the trust is established, the benefits and number of applications uh, grow exponentially. So we humans tend to overestimate uh, the impact of, of technology in the short term, uh, but underestimate it in the long term. So this is this is what's. Uh, uh, scientists call um, the Amara law. Uh, and AI, as uh, you, Claire, uh, mentioned, is only starting to get adop uh, adoption. So there are lots of, there is lots of conflicting information uh, out there. There is lots of um, hyped uh, uh, topics uh, in news, uh, but the real benefits, uh, the, the scaled benefits uh, are yet to be seen. Uh, but those benefits already exist, though those, they are already applied 
uh, in a count countless of, um, of uh, situations and use cases. But what makes AI such a big deal uh, compared to previous technologies? Well, as humanity, uh, we progressed due to our unique ability to learn, to create complex reasoning. Uh, because of this learning, we can progress at scale. And that's also the domain of AI. Uh, so that's what makes it stand out from any other technology uh, that has ever been created. Because AI can learn quickly. So the more you interact with it, the, the, more, the smarter it becomes. Uh, and it means that its intelligence is increasing. So whether you believe in it, uh, be, believe in it or not, but in 2013, basically, the uh, scientists said that AI had the same intelligence as, a let's say, a four-year-old. And they predict that in uh, by 2029, uh, the forecasts show that AI will likely surpass human intelligence. So it will be much more efficient um, than a, an adult is. Uh, but it can already do pretty amazing things. And um, there are many types of AI uh, from deep learning uh, and machine learning tools, of which a perfect example uh, is popularized by uh, news uh, deep fakes, which is also very uh, crucial to um, tackle and, and uh, regulate. Uh, for example, so, so this is just a uh, type of uh, deep deep fake, uh, which is applied on art. But as you may have seen in, in news, there are lots of fake uh, videos uh, using um, uh, the persona of famous politicians or actors uh, saying things which they have never really said in, in reality. So um, so this is seems like this, this type of uh, Example seems to be non-dangerous, but um, or entertaining, but there are many more which are uh, could be saving lives or can help us uh, like uh, progress as a humanity. So on the left you see the Tesla self-driving car. On the right you see the self-diagnosing uh, uh, NASA and um, rover, uh, which uses uh, machine learning to constantly analyze data and predict what's the best uh, next move. Because if you can imagine, <laughs> if, if that kind of machine uh, breaks or uh, goes to some uh, forbidden place, uh, it's a lot of, um, let's say, um, lost investment. It's a big lost investment. And um, so there is also a whole area of AI making sense of text, uh, voice, um, and unstructured data. Uh, and it's called natural language processing. And that's my domain. That's what we do with um, Untried. So just for those just uh, like uh, getting familiar with it, uh, these are the co computer algorithms uh, designed to make decisions, often uh, like using real-time data. Um, and as you said, Claire, uh, some people think uh, AI is such a, like it's portrayed as a scary robot, like in a Terminator, Terminator movie, uh, that is a threat to humanity. But it's it's a wrong uh, image. Uh, in in AI, uh, any type of AI, uh, there is obviously good uh, applications and bad applications. Um, and I I'm pretty sure that you have seen once uh, this uh, picture of uh, Margaret Hamilton. Uh, standing next to a pile of printed out code uh, she wrote for NASA uh, in, I think, 60, 60s. Uh, so this is the logic uh, which sent um, the first humans to the moon. Um, AI is a completely different game. Um, here you train uh, machine learning and uh, AI models. And uh, by feeding them examples, so like a human uh, that when you have a kid, you show him or the kid is very, usually very curious. So he asks, mom, what is this? And what's that? And what's that? And that's how they learn. And this is exactly the same case with, with uh, computers. You show them similar um, group of examples uh, with some differences uh, and it's 
uh, and it learns if it's the same thing, if it's not, uh, and then you can help them, you can support them with with the decisions. So, for example, if it uh, guesses wrong, um, you you tell them it's wrong, and then it rain it reinforces the learning. So the fun fact is that um, you may be training the AI algorithms uh, without even knowing that. So these kind of cap capture. Um, uh like images uh or quizzes um which you probably have seen on many many um websites uh are used to train uh the self-driving the, the auto automotive the automatic uh cars uh because you know better if this is a car or this is a boat whatever than not and and th this information is being fed to to those systems um at scale um so the captcha uh, oh yes so, so sorry so uh, this brings me to one of the biggest obstacles uh, in our lives so obstacles and opportunities uh, and which is data so the huge amounts of data we collect we produce every day um, and then you think of it as against the human limitations so time uh, we get tired we get uh, as we get tired we get we are prone to making errors um, and obviously there is so much so much we don't know uh, but maybe out of that uh, and this is the reason why AI um, and improving the service intelligence uh, through AI is such a game changer uh, because that can improve exponentially how we live and work. Because as I said, humans, as, as humans, we cannot possibly understand and grasp all the available data uh, and make sense of it instantly. Computers can, uh, that's not how our brains work. That's because data or any kind of large uh, amount of information is overwhelming. And according to um, the American psychologist, uh, George Millers, uh, who did a study in 1956, human brain can only consume so much information before becoming overloaded. So in fact, uh, most people can uh, consume and, and handle only seven chunks of information, plus minus two um, at a time. And you've probably heard of the paradox of choice, uh, where having more opinion, uh, options actually makes us unable to make decisions. So more is not always better. Now, if you take it into context of working in a large co corporation or large uh, public institute, and then you think how, ma how many databases and systems you need to interact uh, with at work every day, then you, you, you get the feeling, you, you understand how data can be overwhelming. And it's not always, oh, actually it's never uh, the case of data being well organized, you knowing where to find something. It's always scattered data, fragmented data, and it's always difficult to make sense of um, what we see on, and what we don't see uh, and how everything re uh, relates. So lots of things are uh, overlooked and those, thing, those bits of information may be crucial to solving your problem. And people use usually their gut feeling instead of taking decisions based on heart um, and supported by, by data. So what happens when uh, the employees who have been in um, in your organization for many years and know everything. So what happens when they leave uh, or retire? Uh, usually this knowledge goes <laughs> through the door with them, it, it dies. Uh, and then it has to be rediscovered. The, the, the <laughs> wheels need to be reinvented and often at a very great like big cost. So instead of uh, reinvent, uh, reinventing the wheel, uh, we should be drawing from the expertise um, of our current and ex colleagues. That's because so many answers of uh, your current uh, projects or current problems are already there. 
um, spread in silos in, in many di different files. We, you, you don't even know they exist. Uh, emails or support tickets uh, that no one really took time to codify and uh, make, make you familiar with. So as I said in the beginning of our of, of my um, presentation, um, there is this uh, concept uh, called tribal knowledge or collective knowledge. So, so the whole information um, also stored and and uh, be uh, the, the information which is in in human brains in in human minds, um, which is not which hasn't been codified, uh, but it helps to interact and. Um, access and, and find uh, the, the right bit of information uh, for your particular needs. So tribal knowledge basically means all the unwritten uh, information and practices that are part of every company. Um, so it typically leaves um, in the heads of senior employees uh, who have been there and done that for a while. So the amount of tribal knowledge uh, is directly, usually directly proportional to the years of existence, uh, the growth and the underlying complexity. And it may surprise you or may not, uh, but it can be as high as 50% uh, in some companies with some uh, complex products or services. But it's okay because AI can come to rescue. And um, even though the most of the tribal knowledge uh, hasn't been codified, um, sorry, yeah, it hasn't been codified. Uh, it lives in the, in form of free text, um, and it is already there somewhere stored in the systems. And AI can help to like specifically through this natural language processing type of AI can tap into this knowledge, uh, codify it or label it, uh, and it can help you draw information from it. So if you are thinking about uh, all this uh, other uh, good uses of AI, and um, there are many applied in the current situation that they have been applied in current situations, but also the the problems we've been face facing for many years and and trying to solve such as um, bias, right? So, and um, if you think of all the biases, you may have heard of uh, shocking cases in systems of justice. Uh, many researchers uh, highlighted how judges' decisions can be unconsciously uh, influenced by their own personal beliefs. Um, or the work examples, uh, related examples, where employees, uh, employers granted uh, interviews at different rates to candidates with identical re resumes, but names, con um, names considered to reflect different uh, racial groups. And human decisions are also very difficult to review because people may lie uh, about factors they considered or may not understand the factors uh, that influence their uh, thinking, uh, leaving room for unconscious bias. And AI can help reduce that. Technically, it can also reinforce that, uh, but that's a whole different subject. Uh, but it gives us the power to, to, to solve that, to, to tap, tap on and tackle this, this issue. Um, because AI, as, as I told you on the example or, or the um, symbol of, of uh, how the child uh, works, AI, learns through the world, about the world, uh, through, from the data we feed it. So if we feed the, the rotten, the bad data, uh, the AI outcomes, the AI algorithms will be bad too. But if we make sure to, to feed them uh, unbiased uh, information and uh, the information reflecting the real situation, then AI can help us to to tackle on the unconscious bias humans do have it, do have, sorry. Um, so luckily, as, as I said, there is more and more stress uh, put into understanding how AI systems are designed and um, how they come up with the results they do. And this is the field which is called um, explainable AI. 
And there are lots of initiatives, especially in European Union, uh, which uh, put a lot of emphasis on um, ethical AI. So designing AI and understanding how the, the results, they, like how did the algorithm come up with the, um, with the results they did. Uh, but enough of the theory. I want to bring some of the greatest examples of AI uh, uh, I've been, I've seen, or, or I've been working on. Uh, so very, very recent, still very recent. Hopefully, or it's already done. So let's look at the healthcare and current situation. Uh, so pandemic, right? Millions of people across the world, world have got uh, have gotten their vaccine. And that's also thanks to AI, because the pace and the scale of uh, the vaccine rollout uh, was unprecedented. AI played a crucial uh, role in it. If you don't work in healthcare, you have no idea how complex, how many um, uh, moves, how many uh, different um, uh, steps, uh, a part tap, like a simple procedure as a uh, distributing and um, let's say uh, vaccines has to uh, be done so so you know ai could help uh, or ai helped with um supplying or like um, distributing the the vaccines to different uh hospitals and organizations which were at higher need and um, so machine learning uh, helps to schedule uh, vaccines to those who were more vulnerable uh, and it streamlines patients' uh, communications and even prioritized access, um, as I said, to those more vulnerable. Uh, but there are many other ways of, to utilize AI. One of the projects I had a chance of working on uh, using NLP, so the life of AI, um, was to analyze patient data uh, which allowed to uh, for better management of patients' visits. So if you go to the doctors, usually large part of their attention when, when they see you is writing down what you're saying, right? Like what kind of information, uh, what kind of doses uh, uh, you've been getting and, and also doctors actually checking in the systems uh, either prior to you entering the room or when you are already there uh, just reading uh, all this information and having lots of different systems can be very um, time consuming so the actual serving and actual attention to to you is very little so ai can also help to um give more give back uh, more time more attention to you um, and, and the doctor right uh, so um, another use case um, I touched uh, on in the beginning of uh, my talk uh, is how we uh, so how AI is used to um, in crime prevention and but better public assistance so AI has proven to massively um, benefit uh, to be beneficial to policing as big data sets, so many different systems, many uh, much information being collected uh, can be processed faster and risk uh, assessed much more accurately. Uh, and even some of the biggest threats, such as terrorist, uh, terrorist attacks, uh, can be spotted in time and prevented. Um, and in short, just AI can help to solve more, more crimes uh, with uh, a number of um, the same number or less number of police officers uh, in a shorter time. So according to, to home office uh, data, the proportions of crimes um, involved, solved in, in, by police in England and Wales uh, has fallen to the le level, uh, lowest level recorded and crime investigations are expensive, right? And uh, each case takes a lot of man hours. Uh, resources not be, uh, may not be this big problem in large cities like London and Munich, uh, but resource poor cities or counties uh, are less able to reduce um, investigators' uh, caseloads. And 
this, there are more and more systems and there is always something which needs to be updated, something needs to be uh, upgraded and there is much more siloed data. Um, and AI can cut the time to research and find the patterns in data and sources where people may not even uh, look for or know that this such data exists. So like I mentioned, um, traditionally, when a person, uh, a witness calls uh, to report an accident, a person uh, in the control room would take a note and, and then analyze it quick, as quickly as they can and assess their risk level. Um, based on that, the dispatch, um, dispatch uh, team uh, would send a number of officers according, according to the seriousness of the situation. However, 40% um, of 999 calls uh, recorded by the Met Police I, uh, are considered uh, non-vulnerable. So people calling, um, you know, making pranks, miscellaneous uh, or drop-off calls. And this takes vulnerable, um, like valuable time and resources, um, which people otherwise and officers otherwise could uh, use to assign um, others to help in real uh, danger. And that's, uh, that's why we are seeing that by using AI, the system can automatically analyze what kind of call is it. So if it's a prank, if it's a drop off, and it gives it a lower priority, right? Because it's easy to spot uh, that kind of calls. And that gives police um, staff more time to focus on uh, on uh, most important task, which is assisting uh, other human being uh, and making informed decision and, and deciding how to handle situation. Because we can't hide from the fact, as I said before, um, fatigue and stress uh, contribute to many accidents, uh, on not only in public sector, but in, in many other industries, such as manufacturing, for example. And one of the key of uh, key advantages of AI uh, and making the whole uh, service intelligent uh, is the ability to stay to always stay alert, focused, and relaxed at all, all times. Um, so we don't really have much time, and I would love to uh, hear some of your questions. Uh, I hope I hope you have some. Um, so just to give you like the idea of how, what kind of future uh, there can be when when the AI adoption um, is full on. So with like with everything, AI has also the the other side to the story, right? Like. Uh, can AI can help to support, to uh, improve types of uh, jobs we do, make it less, um, let's say, mundane. But also, um, there are also possibilities of um, job cuts and, and job um, losing people losing job jobs thanks to or thanks <laughs> because of AI. Um, but unnecessary. It, it's not necessarily a bad thing because as many types of um, of uh, professions may have like maybe uh, reduced or uh, vanished due to AI, there will be many more uh, that will be um, created because um, in recent uh, McKinsey reports, uh, uh, which estimated that in by twenty. Uh, 30 robotics and AI will take human jobs in actually less than 5% uh, of the roles. But on the other side of the coin, uh, it's been also reported that it will enhance 60% of the other jobs uh, rather than displace uh, humans altogether. Because more uh, exciting, more um, creative jobs will be created. And it's hard to imagine if you think about it, uh, uh, 10 years ago, there was no such thing, no such role, no such profession as a data scientist or even a um, YouTuber, right? Um, and right now, there, there are so many. AI tools and robots um, are digital uh, co-workers 
uh, will enable people to perform roles that were previously beyond our capability. Automated co-workers will also increase uh, our productivity uh, and it, they will enable us to work shorter days and, and benefit the, while benefiting the economy as a whole. Uh, as whole. If this uh, pandemic taught us anything, uh, it's that embracing technology and digital transformation can be done fast. Um, because the way we work uh, has rapidly changed. So remote work is uh, something which lots of us um, love and don't want to change, um, presents new challenges such as information uh, exchange um, limits or um, creating uh, intelligent productivity. And to pre prepare for this AI revolution and be on top of that, um, we need to become more data driven uh, and use technology, not in instead of being scared of it, uh, embrace technology to, prove, to improve our working practices. So um, we noticed in my work uh, in Android that um, the most successful companies have been focusing uh, so far on those three areas. So establishing a culture of co collaboration to unleash uh, innovation, driving intelligent productivity through, for example, using intelligent um, applications um, such as uh, service intelligence uh, uh, powered by AI and making company assets accessible. So helping people become more independent. Uh, to sum up, uh, people use technology to solve problems uh, of our own nature, uh, to reach before, um, beyond our limits. Uh, and AI is a perfect candidate to do that because it enhances the speed, uh, precision, and effective effectiveness of our efforts. We should always advocate for a human plus AI approach. So using systems, AI systems alongside humans, not instead of them, uh, making them more efficient and happy. Uh, as we progress with AI, we will be able to figure out not only how to solve problems, but what problems are worth solving. Uh, because with AI, we are finally able to uh, get more comprehensive insights um, of, on what pa patterns are there and what areas we can improve. Uh, we are finally able to work on things we will enjoy and leave the mundane uh, repetitive tasks uh, such as Excel spreadsheets <laughs> to robots who will always do a better job uh, than us. That's why I'm very optimistic uh, about the future of AI. Uh, and as I'm trying, to, we think AI will solve many more challenges uh, than it creates. Um, I hope you will join uh, us uh, in this journey of humanizing work and making our lives uh, better. Thank you. And I would, I guess we have only 10, 15 minutes, uh, so I welcome any questions. Thank you so much, Camilla. That was such um, an amazing session. Um, please, if you do have any questions at all for Camilla, either write them down in the chat or you can ask them in the Q&A tab below. So as we wait for the question to stream in, Camilla, I have a question for you. Go on. Um, you have a lot of experience, not just in AI, but also in terms of management and all these other things. So why AI? Why did you choose to come into the field of AI? And particularly, why AI in service intelligence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> so I guess it was uh, just natural and um, evolvement, right? Um, AI, I've been working in management, I've been working in, in software industry for, for quite some time. And, and as, you, as you may have heard from, from, from my um, talk, the, the type of technology or, or the technology uh, which right now is, is on the market uh, helps us to manage things uh, more efficiently. So 
it would be silly of me not to uh, get interested and uh, try to utilize uh, what uh, humans, right? Because um, uh, AI is, is made by humans for humans. So um, I, knowing um, that I want to do my job and job for my clients the, the best we can, um, utilizing this, this type of um, uh, technology is, is just a natural move. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Camilla. I think we actually have um, a question, question in the chat. <laughs> yeah, and we have Penina. She's asking, Camilla, you talked about AI boosting opportunities for employment rather than mm -hmm. replacing the people. So how is this going to come about? Um, so I'm not sure if, like, what kind of, um, okay, what kind of questions, uh, what, what kind of um, angle, uh, Penina, are you thinking about is the type of uh, employment utilizing AI or like the type of roles uh, where AI uh, skills would be useful or can you maybe elaborate your question or maybe just unmute yourself and we can just talk? Okay, um, maybe, okay, if, if I understand um, Penina's question well, and I think okay. when she comes I, I can back, see she's writing, okay. Oh, How is okay. it going to create awesome. employment yet? They are, they are mostly machines doing the work. Well, there are lots of, of course, <laughs> but someone needs to um, program those machines, right? Someone needs to supervise those ma machines. But it's not only machines, it's not, don't, don't think of it as, as there are obviously types of, uh, AI, uh, which utilize hardware, which like when I showed you the Roomba robots or those drones delivering uh, blood um, in remote places, but there is also uh, like AI use, utilizing only software, which for example, we, we do. Um, and there is always going to be more and more, um, on, let's say, need uh, as, as the, those, uh, those systems are created because the, um, the scale of, of the, the projects, the scale of the tasks which AI can handle uh, will, will be larger, but there will be always, um, as, as, as we are um, like imagining it, there will be always human plus machine approach. So there will be always human who will be controlling those machines uh, to see if it's, uh, you know, um, non-threatening to to our uh, lives, and 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 it's actually benefiting humanity and 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 making the right decisions, right? Because we would never um, use or or let the overall uh, AI decision to I don't know um, uh, assist someone over some somebody else without human actually understanding if if it's you know, if it's the right choice. So yes, there will be larger scale and, and, and there'll be just more, more jobs created and it's already happening. Yes, that's, that's, that's very true, true, Camilla. Um, I think you have another question from Kalebu. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure if the attendees can see it, but the question is, um, Kalebu asks, I'm interested to learn more about what Untried AI can do. What kind of data mm -hmm. it supports? What are some of the use cases from your clients and what yeah. are the limitations of it? Right, so uh, we focus on, so we work on, on mainly two sectors. So the public sector uh, with the UK policing, uh, we work through our partnership with uh, British Telecom. And we work also in private sector, which is focused on manufacturing and engineering. And what we do, as, as I um, showed you in the beginning of my talk, that um, we help companies to uh, utilize the data, utilize information they, they store um, and, and remove or at least like limit the silos. So, so uh, try to defragment the, the information they have. Uh, so in terms of the type of data it supports, we focus on the unstructured data. So um, if you think of any kind of textual data, basically, right? So it can be PDFs, uh, spreadsheets, um, cu customer uh, tickets, uh, like ticket and ticket systems, emails in, in some areas. Um, but it also can read uh, images. So in some images, you have metadata. Um, wherever there is also, there is uh, some, some unstructured data, we can utilize it. 
uh, and what kind of limitations are uh, of it? Well, so there are like, large organizations have obviously lots of bureaucracy, lots of um, systems are legacy systems, right? So um, the the let's say the ben benefits of a of of applying our systems, our our algorithms, can be seen only to those systems which we can connect, right? So um, sometimes uh, the limitations we see are within the companies which created those legacy systems or um, use utilize large organizations which are very protective to to their of of their data. So we see the the problems in in like linking the the, the systems but the more systems we can connect the, the bigger the largest scale and uh, benefits we can uh, provide for our clients uh, but if you can if you want to learn more um i can send you some more information but uh, feel free to visit our website we have some uh, demos as well um i can yeah i can send it over if, if you can if you want to reach out to me after the call. Uh, and there's Penina still asking, uh, okay, two questions. <laughs> um, you talked about AI, to, okay, surpassing human intelligence by 2029. How are you preparing as humans towards such a change? Well, I cannot prepare you, <laughs> but um, well, it's it's like with any type of, um, and these are obviously estimations and, and um, it's it's uh, these are like uh, reports which are conducted by those large um, management consulting firms. This was the McKinsey one. That um, it's no doubt that we should be uh, we we should stay on top of uh, all the technology which is uh, right now um, trending or or utilizing right or util being utilized. So there are lots of uh, systems. So you don't need to code. You don't need to. Like I, I'm not a programmer. I, um, I'm very savvy with technology. I understand how everything works, but I am not as technical as uh, some people may have think may may think. But it's important to understand what kind of benefits uh, the current technology can present and just work with it, right? So if you, there are lots of different. Uh, like courses, many of them are free uh, on um, MIT, uh, I think has like open, uh, open university, open uh, database of, of courses, which you can take, uh, which will help you understand um, like the basics, the foundations of how um, AI systems work. And that's, you know, that's something you can only um like you can only benefit from because your employees will see it and they will um potentially be interested in in working with you and are there some ways or strategies that you are using to make humans getting aware and prepared for it <laughs> ways so as i said i guess it's a very similar question and um, there is um, a lot of um a lot of uh, resources already uh whether it depends what kind of things you are interested in, right? But um, if you think about um, about like utilizing this, like using this opportunity to your own benefit and to the benefit of, of other people, um, maybe if you are passionate about, I don't know, sustainable AI or ethical AI, there are areas or there are organizations we can jo you can join and and you can learn much uh, about and uh, just help advocating um, to others what kind of benefits you can create uh, at, on larger scale uh, utilizing AI not not being scared of it. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Penina, for all the questions. Um, um, and just to add on to what, um, um, oh, thank you so much, Benina. T just to add on what Camila said, um, she's basically just telling us to learn, to learn and to evolve <laughs> and to learn about There's AI. No <laughs> exactly. So one, one of my favorite quotes actually is by Alvin Toffler. He basically says that the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who cannot read and write. There are those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So, Penina, I think it's time to unlearn what you already know and maybe relearn 
more things about AI. Um, are there any more questions that we have for Camilla? Yes, I do not see any other questions. So Camilla, how, how would you like um, people to reach out to you? Um, is it by um, LinkedIn? Um, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And I think you have my uh, email as well, Claire. Um, you can distribute it, but I guess LinkedIn is the easiest way. Okay, I have just shared Camilla's LinkedIn or in the chat. So make sure to reach out to her um, in case you have any further questions. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Camilla, for this thank session. You, I have personally learned so much. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to understanding more about service intelligence. Um, it is my first time interacting with um, a service intelligence talk. Um, so <laughs> it has been quite insightful to say the least. Thank yes. You.